Hi, Kimberly. Basildur. Zelly. Good evening, everyone. Welcome in. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Welcome in, guys. <laughs> welcome in. Oh, fantastic, fantastic. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Blessings. Blessings, blessings, blessings. How you all doing? Um, Kimberly, I want you to start a watch party. Priscilla, start a watch party. Zelly starts the watch party. And I want each one of you to share it at least five times. Share it about five times, each one of you. Okay. Let's see properly. Okay. It's better. Thank you, Jesus. Excellent. Can you guys hear me? Hello, Tashino. Nisi, how you doing? Mr. Innes, my technical guy. That's my technical guy right there. That's my tech guru right there. <laughs> he's, he's hooking me up. Get me straightened out. Get me, you know, professional. Hi, Listra. I've been listening to your songs. I've been here. You singing up, um, Listra. Man, you be singing, man. <laughs> you, you, you flowing. Shan Roll, God bless you. I want each one of you to share. Listra, share it. Um, share, share, share. Monique Kelly, good evening. How are you doing? Welcome in. It's the first time. God bless you. God bless you. Share, share. Excellent, excellent. Today we, as I promised, you know, we're going to do some of the stuff you guys have been asking about. And um, a lot of people have been asking me about the curse of the bastard. And um, I have mentioned it. I have mentioned it. <clears throat> Times, but I just I kind of mentioned it, but not really did an in-depth teaching on it. And I feel I feel that we need to do something um, in it because there's too much people who are under the grip of this pervasive, horrific uh, disease. It's a disease, so to speak, spiritually speaking. It's a disease, and it's ruined so much lives. And so we wanna we wanna. Um, First of all, talk about what it is, break it down, and then we're gonna we're gonna do some praying. So I'm gonna be real quick today, guys. So it's a it's a broad scope, so I'm gonna break it down in a couple of parts. We'll see how it goes because it really needs to be done. Many people are are laboring under this uh under this under this demonic um uh, spirit. And we're gonna we're gonna look at it right now. Amen. To see exactly what God is saying concerning that, because it's 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 so pervasive, it's so dark, so to speak. And this curse of the bastard, it'll have you, it'll have you going round and round in circles if you don't know what's going on. Amen. This thing will have you tormented, man. And it's um, it's very 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 real, but it's almost like people don't they don't acknowledge it. Because I feel like it's not really true, but it is. It is something to it, and I can tell you about it because I've been through it over over a period of years, and I didn't know what was operating, and I just thought that that's how life was, and now that I've figured out what it was, um, I'm just angry. Let me read. Let me read to you, uh, Deuteronomy 23, and it says, um, begin at verse two. A bastard shall not enter into the congregation of the Lord. Even unto his tenth generation shall he not enter into the congregation of the Lord. An Ammonite or Moabite shall not enter into the congregation of the Lord. Even unto the tenth generation shall they not enter into the congregation of the Lord. Wow, did you get that? See, the curse of the bastard is so serious and it's not just talking about you marry out of wedlock. It's beyond that. That's just a small <clears throat> part of that. It's bigger than that. What he's talking about, did you hear what he said? And the Amorites and the Moabites, they shall not enter into the congregation of the Lord. Why would he say that? Hi, Carrie Ann. How you doing? Hi, Rihanna. Prophet Samuel, God bless you. Welcome in. <clears throat> Carrie Ann, I need you to share it. Rihanna, share it. Uh, Prophet Samuel, share it. Share, share, share. Um, 
the reason why he said it is 10 generations that you cannot come into his presence a bastard a bastard is a curse when a a Jew married an idolatrous person that's really what it is a Moabite a Amorite a Gergeshite a uh, Hittite so to speak that was considered back in the day incestuous it was considered um, to be something that God frowned upon and so to have a child out of wedlock was very very serious and it carried, it carried with it a, a curse of 10 generations. Now 10 multiplied by 40 because a generation is 40 years. You multiply 10 by 40 by 10 generations and you get 400. So that's 400 years. Hey, Ray Simmons, how you doing, buddy? Good to have you on, man. <laughs> Welcome in. It's my boy right there. So this curse of the bastard... <coughs> Is for ten generations. Now notice the Lord said, I will visit the iniquities of the of the of the fathers on the children for the third and fourth generations. Four generations for the iniquities of the fathers on the children. But on the bastard, he says, Ten generations they shall not come into my congregation. Ten generations. That's four hundred years. Why was this curse so severe? Why was it so serious? Why did he say, I don't want the Amorites in, I don't want the Moabites in? Well, if you know anything but the Moabites and the Amorites, you'll know that in Genesis, um, Lot's, Lot's daughters, they slept with their dad after they came out of Sodom, and they felt like there was nobody to repopulate the land. So they took turns sleeping with their dad, and they produced from that line the Ammonites uh, and the Moabites. And if you know anything about the Moabites and the Ammonites, they gave... They gave the children of God so much problems. And they were really, really, really mean to them. So this is what we call incest. So the ancestral, uh, incestuous uh, relationship that they had barred them from God's presence. That's why people, <clears throat> they can't seem to get into God's presence. When you have the Spirit on you, it's hard to get into God's presence. It's hard to connect with godly people. It's hard to tap into the things of God. You'll find that you can't connect with the things of God like how you want to. You'll want to you'll want to pray, you'll want to fast, you'll want to seek the Lord, but you won't be able to do it. And you'll find a lot of strange things happening to you because it's a curse that operates. Yes, you say, yes, you love the Lord, but there's still something there because there's parts of you that have not been totally yielded over to the Lord. And this spirit is very, very, very pervasive. It's also known as the curse of illegitimacy. When there's illegitimate um, um, children, or they were born from abortion, even though they had aborted the child, it still goes on to the next child and the next generation because it's still there. So that's why you got to do deliverance. Yes, the Lord is setting us people free, and He is delivering us. But there is sometimes some things in the in the in the bloodline that's been fighting us, and it's called the curse of the bastard. And we can do some praying on it. I'm gonna give you some ex some explanations, some signs, and symptoms of it but we can pray more so than anything because i want to break some things in the realms of the spirit because this thing had me so bound for so many years because i'm the product of illegitimacy uh and and um and also uh some things that i'd done you know not knowing back in the day that not knowing the consequences of what i was getting into and so i'd open up doors i didn't even recognize i was opening up the doors i didn't know the level <coughs> of of um, of pain and suffering that I was going to go through. So what I'm giving you is not just something that I, I've studied, but it's something I've lived. I've lived it. And I've seen the devastating effects on it. I've seen it, all right? And so we can talk about it some more. In Hebrews 12, it says, verse 6, it says, For the Lord disciplines those he loves, and he punishes each one he accepts as his own. In other words, he's, you're not a bastard. And if the Lord is punishing you and chastising you, that means you're a son. If he's not, that means that you are not a son. If he's not correcting you, if you're not being chastised. But what happened is, is a bastard child, a bastard child can't take correction. A bastard child can't take reproval. A bastard child or a bastard, one with a bastard spirit, sorry, <clears throat> more, more uh, succinctly, those with the bastard spirit, they can't receive correction. 
they have a know-it-all attitude. They know it all. It's only, it's only them that know it. You can't say nothing to them. And they never, never want to give any ground. They dominate the conversation. And they are Mr. Uh, Mr. Know-it-all. So you can't say nothing to them. They just know it all. They, that's one of the signs that there's a uh, spirit of the bastard operating. This spirit uh, brings a lot of guilt. It brings shame. It brings the imposter phenomenon. The imposter phenomenon means that you, you, you feel like you're a failure and you can't do the job. Yet you're very competent. You're very good at what you do. And it's, it's that spirit but it's like it, it always keeps you in a position where you don't feel like you're worth it, but you could fake it. There's the extreme end. I think everybody, uh, to some extent, they got um, some, for, some, some sort of dysfunction in terms of that bastardized spirit because, you know, this thing has been passed on from wars. Whenever they would rape the women in wars, whenever they would rape the slaves in wars, whenever they were fighting in wars, that's how a lot of children came. They came as a result of rape. Rape. You know, sometimes your great-granddad or great-granddad uh, uh, came as a result of his mother being raped. And so that spirit was passed down. That spirit of the of the bastard was passed down, and the curse of the bastard has been uh, operating. So that's why a lot of people they're gonna recognize that you know when you when you live in this life, when you live in a life of for the Lord, the enemy is very cunning. He's very tricky. He's very uh, uh, smooth. And what he will do is he will try to figure out how to destroy your life in a very subtle way. And uh, and and this is how he does because this is his go-to. This is a go-to. Welcome, prophetess Young. God bless you. <laughs> um, this is go-to, and he will, he will, he will, he will use this very subtly because he figured out how to do this. And you'll see all through the Bible, all through the Bible. When once we do the study, you'll see all through the Bible, he was using the same trump card to stop God's people, to cause problems. Even with, even with Tamar, Tamar, Tamar. Um, uh, had the same spirit, because uh, she she uh, she born uh, Perez uh, and, and 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 zero uh, through uh, Judah. Remember when she tricked him and 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 and, and, um, and acted as a as a harlot and prostitute. He had he had children and she took some of his bracelets and his um, his um his staff and his amulet, and 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 then she turned around and tell him say you know you the one who got me pregnant. You see how that's happening. Illegitimacy. Same thing with Abraham when he followed, when he followed Hagar, when he followed Hagar into the tent, and he had Ishmael. Ishmael them still operated under the curse of the of the bastard. They still up to this day operated under the same curse, and they are they are Israel's they are Israel's most ardent and hateful enemy. They hate, they hate Israel, and yet they are two brothers. They are two brothers fighting, two brothers children fighting. The same thing happened. With David, the same thing happened with with uh, Amnon, who loved Tamar, and he raped his sister, uh, and he left her destitute. And what happened is Absalom killed him. Then Absalom Absalom slept with all David's concubine, uh, tried to take over the uh, tried to take over the kingdom. You see, when you sin and open doors, that's what's going to happen. Same thing with Saul. Saul was a people's pleaser, and that's one of the signs of a, of a, of a of the curse of the bastard. You want to please people. You always want to please people. You are concerned about people's opinion. All right? And so there's the other end of the spectrum where you don't care at all. <laughs> you just don't care. Uh, to the place where you just become reckless and foolish and you endanger people's lives and yourself. And there's the other thing when you just people please it. Amen? So what God has said in this season is that is that uh, he's going to deliver a lot of people from the same, same um, ailment and the same affliction. This affliction is terrible to the uh, to the persons who are under it. When you are laboring under this under this uh, under this particular affliction, it will keep you bound. It says in Zechariah nine and six, it says, "A mixed people shall dwell in Ashdod, Ashdod, and I will cut off the pride of Philistia." That word "mixed people" means bastard, bastard, and Ashdod means you know what Ashdod means? Ashdod means ruin, desolation. Destruction. It means a place of corruption and corrosion. It means a place of stagnation and limitation. Ashdod is a place of death, and that's where they had to go. People who were bastards were outcasts. They lived in. They lived like lepers, like in a leper colony, and they had. To, they couldn't mix with the purebred Jews. They couldn't mix with the pure, purebred uh, Hebrews. They had to live 
in a colony almost, and it was almost like they had germs. That's why they used to call them dogs. That's why the Lord told the woman, it's not lawful to give the children's bread to dogs. The, the term dogs comes from that term right there, the bastard. The bastard, because a dog in heat will sleep with any other dog. You understand me? And so that's where that term comes from. It's called Gentile. It's called dog also. It's, it's a broad term. It's an umbrella term. They use it for a lot of other things too. Um, you know, they use it for warlocks as well. So what will happen is you'll find these people uh, under the curse of the bastard. They always fall in for scams. They always into scams. They always fall in for some deal. I know a guy who's, who's I mean, he used to treat people bad in terms of, you know, um, you know, paying them and stuff like that. It took took really bad, um, you know, bad care of his employees. And he ended up falling for a scam and a scam online. And right online, they took almost close to $4 million from him. Right online, right from here. They took about $4 million from this man. And so he's so embarrassed and shamed that he can't tell nobody, but it, it literally bankrupted him. You see? It bankrupted him because when you're deceiving, you also deceive. So when you see a person getting take take to the cleaner like that and you 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 are intelligent and brilliant, you become a part of your own deception because you deceive and you're being deceived. And so they're always in some sort of heist or con or extortion or stick up or online hacking or online scamming. Or they use a strong arm um, um strong arming tactics, or they or they're trying to uh uh, uh get you lowered into something. You know, be careful of people who always want you to, to get a part of this deal, part of this scheme, part of this thing. You know, some of them don't really mean and buy it. Some of them just that's just the way they are. But but um 